Luke chapter 17, let's go down here to verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, everybody say Noah, Noah. so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. They were living <laughs> normal lives. There is nothing wrong with eating and drinking and <laughs> getting married. Are you seeing that? The problem was they were asleep. They didn't understand the day and an hour that they lived in. They didn't understand that hour. They didn't understand what God was trying to do. And God was reaching out to everybody. But everybody else was doing their own thing. And it was a day just like Noah. How many see that today? Yeah. Seems like the church is asleep. Yeah. I mean, no, we need a great awakening. Glory be to God. We need to, for people to wake up and know the hour, the day and the hour. Come on. Uh, and, and really, it's time for an awakening. I believe that. And, it, and it's time for an awakening to the things of God. Amen. To understand this fully... And, and really, it, if you read on, it, it says, and then sudden destruction came on. But to understand the days of Noah, the only way you can understand is going to Genesis chapter 6. So go with me to Genesis chapter 6. And we're going to go to verse 11. Genesis chapter 6 is going to give us an, so many insights tonight. I, I, I couldn't wait to preach this. Glory to God. Genesis chapter 6, and let's go down here to verse 11. It says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Everybody say violence. violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted uh, its way upon the earth. Verse 13, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them uh, with, with the earth. Violence was spreading throughout the world. How many of you today violence is all around us? We are living in the days of Noah. Come on, somebody. I, I mean, when you think of, of terrorism, both foreign and domestic, we're, we're seeing domestically right now worse things than we've ever seen. I mean, they're taking states, they're taking cities. You look at Seattle and Atlanta and, and Minneapolis and Chicago and on and on and on. We're seeing violence taking place and things are going on right now just like it was in the time of Noah. Amen. And so violence was, was going on. Uh, we look in America today, we're seeing neo-Marxists. We're seeing this, 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 this spirit rising up in our country. Neo-Marxists, and, and really it goes in, and, and it flows right alongside socialism, yep. liberalism, and all the isms. <laughs> uh, these things are going on right now. Uh, Marxism is an anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-church system. And we've got to understand, we are, we are coming up against darkness. But we're the church. And we're the light. And the light overcomes the darkness. Hallelujah. They're going to have to get the church out of here. They're going to do some things to get us out of here. But the rapture is ultimately going to get us out of here. But when the light is no longer here, the darkness will be at its pinnacle. Now, uh, go over here to verse 5 and let's... let's uh, well, let me say one more thing. <laughs> this, this Marxist uh, uh, system, this junk that's going on, they're, they're using certain people and doing certain things. Uh, they're tearing down statues. The leader of one organization that is, is prominent uh, said the next statues they're going to take down are statues of Jesus. Right, right. 
You think maybe this is fighting darkness? You think maybe this is a spiritual attack? Maybe this is something bigger than what you're hearing on the evening news? Absolutely. We're living in an hour of violence. Right, right. We're living in an hour where, where you can't feel safe going uh, to certain areas of Dallas. Right. People are, are living in such a way of violence today. I, I mean, you look at, at, at television, violence on television, violence in video games, violence all around us uh, every day. And they say that a child will, just in watching television, will see 200,000 acts of violence before they reach the age of 18. So the violence in, in all areas... And, it, and, it, and it's to a point where it's in the hearts of men. Uh, verse 5. Go back here and let's, let's get, dig in this some more. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So in other words, in the days of Noah, their minds, their thoughts were evil all the time. How many know that the, the imagination and the, and the way people think? You know, so as a man thinks, the Bible says, so is he. Jesus even put it this way. If you even look upon a woman to lust, you've, you've already lusted at. I mean, you might as well have just been with her. Why? Because it's in your heart. You've already thought it. You've imagined it. Well, the same thing with evil. When you are imagining evil and you're thinking evil and you're walking in evil, I mean, it, it, it takes over you and you become evil. Mm -hmm. And really, we have an evil generation that is, that is doing all types of evil today. Every type of wickedness. You can't turn on the TV without seeing all kinds of wickedness. I mean, it used to be where we'd be watching a TV show, and Kathleen and I'd be watching for a while, and, oh, you know, that's pretty good. And then, then they throw in this thing, and they, they toss in that thing, and, and, and you end up turning it off. Why? Because we're living in a dark, dark world that is getting darker. As a man thinks... So is he. Go over here to Genesis chapter 6, and let's start in verse 1 now. And I'm going to show you how all of these things came about. For we are living in the days of Noah. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them uh, wives of all which they chose. Now how many know all this chapter 6 is in context to the days of Noah? And the sons of men there in the Hebrew, <laughs> that term, sons of men, is angels. That's right. And those angels came down. How many know one-third of the angels left their estate, it says, in 1 uh, uh, Peter and Jude? Uh, they, left, they left heaven. We find uh, in many other scriptures where they left with Lucifer, one-third of the angels, and they became principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness. <sighs> Billions. Billions of these fallen angels there in the heavenlies doing things on earth. And people say, well, uh, angels aren't given uh, to marriage. Uh, well, no, you don't understand something. There are all types of angels. Do you know that you can entertain angels unaware because they look just like you? Word of God says you can entertain angels unaware because they, have, they can have a human form where you look at them and they look just like you. Matter of fact, in Psalm Gomorrah, they tried to get a hold of a couple of the angels and, and tried to have their way with them because they thought they were pretty good looking. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> we're living in a day and hour where we're beginning to see some things that uh, there are angels that can reproduce with women. And the Bible teaches it. And those angels came down and they had relationship with, literally it says, the, the daughters of Adam. They came in and had relation, 
sons with them. And, and uh, that Hebrew word for sons of, of God means angels. My, 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 my. Now, the book of Enoch doesn't say sons of God. It says angels. And somebody says, well, the book of Enoch is not in the Bible. It's not canonized. You know, that's not altogether true. In the book of Jude, Jude quotes the book of Enoch. And Jude was the brother of Jesus, so maybe he might have known something. Jude quotes the book of Enoch, and Enoch talks about the angels, he talks about the, the watchers, and he talks about uh, these sons of God, but he calls them angels or fallen angels. And there it is. And so there were angels that were having their way with the daughters of Adam in the time of Noah. Now, uh, go to verse, uh, well, verse 4. There were giants. Everybody say giants. giants. Some translations say Nephilim. Uh, some translations just went ahead and translated it. The word Nephilim means giants. How many know when you have fallen angels, uh, you know, sleeping with, with the daughters of Adam, they produced, their offspring were giants. There were giants in the earth in those days and also thereafter. So in other words, uh, the offspring are the Nephilim. Uh, giants. Giants were never supposed to be here. They're, hi they're hybrids. They're part human and part angel. And the Word of God is very clear here. In the time of Noah, there were hybrids. In the time of Noah, angels were, were coming in and uh, being with, with the daughters of Adam, and they were producing giants. The giants... It says in, in the book of Amos that one, one group of giants, the Amorites, were as tall as cedars. As tall as cedars. When you look at mythology and you see some of the giants and some of the different things, uh, some of those things were written in all types of different groups. The Egyptian mythology, the Greek mythology, the Roman mythology, all these different, on and on. We're talking about giants. Talking, they even talked about Cyclops, one eye in the middle of the forehead. You say, well, that could never happen. It happens today. It's actually, a, 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 it's an amorality. Uh, and uh, they've had humans that way and they've had they have skulls where they've they only has one eye socket uh, and and I believe just a while back there was a there was a, a goat that had one eye so I mean there has been different genetic uh, situations like that and there was many things that went on during the time of Noah are you hearing what I'm saying uh <laughs> my, my, my. Turn me over here to verse 8. But Noah, during all of this, everything's going crazy. There's giants. You know, when they, when they uh, made the movie Noah, and uh, what was it, Russell Crowe and all those, they, they, they thought, well, we'll, we'll uh, add rock creatures to this because it's too boring. It was made by an atheist. And, and the Christians went out and said, oh, we'll buy a ticket. And, and, and let me tell you something. They didn't need rock creatures. All they needed to do was put all the giants in there that were in the land at the time of Noah, and it would have been exciting. Matter of fact, more exciting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All the things that were going on, my goodness. I mean, it would be an epic. Yeah. But during all this, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect. Everybody say perfect. Perfect. In his generations. And Noah walked with God. Yeah. Noah was perfect in his generations. What does that mean? Noah. Yeah, we know that Noah wasn't perfect. We know things from We know he wasn't perfect. How can you say, and, and his generations... 
all of his cousins and aunts, all his people. How can you say that he was perfect? Well, when you understand that word perfect there, it deals with the genetic situation of being perfect. Right. Right. Spotted. Right. When you understand what it's talking about, it's talking about Noah was the only one that didn't have the Nephilim gene. Right. Everybody was cross marrying and, and, and everybody had, had been with different ones and, and it got to a place and let me tell you something that Nephilim gene was the people that were a result of it were very angry Good. angry people there was some genetic mess with that and they were angry and they were uh, they called them mighty men of renown if you read that right there in chapter 6 but that mighty men and that renown, all that is talking about the fact that they were beyond anything that anyone had ever seen before. You didn't mess with these people. <laughs> you didn't mess with these giants. The Bible is a Bible about giants. So I was never taught that. Uh, isn't that important? Oh, yes, it is. And we'll show you why. Now, no Nephilim gene. I believe that uh, <laughs> when, you, when you think about it, today is just like the days of Noah. And you look at hybrids back when. Angels, there were certain angels that could reproduce with all types of things. In mythology, there were hybrids of part human, part animal. And, and you see that throughout history statues of of certain things with wings or or uh, mermaids for that matter whatever but you see all of this now you say well that's myths that's uh, fables that's uh, well if you do a study on it you find out a lot of it dealt with what they had been told from previous generations and it goes way back to when they when they're talking about titans and gods and different things like that they're talking about fallen angels so, so when you think about hybrids, you say, well, this, it couldn't be done. Right now, today, they are working on putting human cells into pig embryos. They're doing it in La Jolla. They're doing it in Spain. They're doing it in Germany. They're doing it in other countries. They are, they've already put a mouse arm on a chicken. When we thought it could not be done, we're living in the days of Noah. We're living in the days where we're finding out it can be done. They're believing that if you do hybrids where a pig can have a human heart and a human uh, organs, that it will, it will solve the crisis of the lack of organ donations, organ transplants. And so they believe it's a, a great thing. Many people are totally against it, mostly Christians, but it's going on anyway. And right now, they are moving towards, and they're right on the brink of producing organs for people in pigs, harvesting them. Now, I want you to know something. God has never been a big <laughs> uh, pigs have never been a favorite of God yeah. <laughs> pigs desecrated the temple you do not use a pig <laughs> of all things and yet the pig is representing the temple of God. How many know our body is the temple of God? Amen. A pig is representing the temple of God in the last days. A hybrid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Turn with me to Genesis. Uh, 6 verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. Everybody say after that. After that. There were giants in the land before the flood. But it goes on to say, and after. 
How many know the flood was mostly to get rid of the giants? Because the, at that time, the giants were throughout the earth and everyone was, there was only one perfect, and that was Noah. And God knew that he had to somehow save Noah and his family and get rid of everybody else. And there was a great flood upon this earth. But it says <laughs> there were those giants before, but also after. Now, uh, hmm. well, we, we, we know one of them that was after, the most famous, Goliath. Goliath was 12 feet, 9 inches tall. There are people today that say, say that, <laughs> that Goliath was a giant and he was 6 foot tall. <laughs> There's actually people that say that, and they go according to the wrong measurements of the Bible. How many know you got to go according to the measurement of the day, not the measurement? How many know measurements changed over history? If you go according to the measurement of the day in which it's recorded, 12 feet 9 inches, you find out that that measurement it comes out to 12, 12 feet 9 inches. Come on. Which is twice the height of a normal man. Goliath was twice the height of a, of a good tall six foot guy. Over that. He was a giant from Gath. And he had four brothers that were giants. Come on, somebody. How I many know that, that when <laughs> David went out there, he went out there with five smooth stones? Why? Because there was four brothers, and he didn't know if the four brothers were coming with him. He had one for Goliath, and he had four extras in, just in case. Come on. King Og of Bashan was 18 feet tall, according to the Word of God. He barely fit in his bed that's recorded to be 18 foot long. That's in Deuteronomy 3.11 and Joshua 2. The Rephim, the Rephim, uh, the Emim, the Horim, the uh, San Zumin in Genesis 14 and 15 were all giants. The Arba, the Anak, and, uh, and his seven sons uh, were what they were called the uh, Anakim. Uh, that's in Numbers 13.33. The Amalek Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and the most famous, the Canaanites. Come on, somebody. I mean, oh, in Numbers 13, they said that uh, uh, the Canaanites, uh, <laughs> the spies that went out and said, we're like grasshoppers. In the side of the Canaanites, we're, we're like they are so tall. We are like grasshoppers. We're going to die if we go in there. And how many know that God already said, "I've given you this land." And so, all of and really all of the ites <laughs> might as well. Have. There were thousands and thousands and thousands of giants in the Bible. Yeah. Right. This is not a minor side note. This is not just something, well, it doesn't matter. This is something that was so prevalent in the days of Noah that God said, enough. The violence, the anger, the wickedness, the evil, the giants, the darkness had come to a plateau. Really, to a crescendo. Now, when David went... <laughs> well, before that, Joshua. Joshua, when he went into the land, God said, kill them all. There are a lot of people that are against the Bible and they will say there's too much war and bloodshed and killing in the Bible. But they don't understand it was against giants. 
Right. It, wasn't, it wasn't God teaching people to make war. Yeah. It wasn't God teaching men to go about killing. It is not a bloody book like atheists will say. It is a book teaching that God, something happened, so the angels came down with women, made giants, and somehow those giants continued even after the flood. And he told Joshua, you go in and you kill them all. Later, he told David, they're still around. Get them out of here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Turn with me over here to uh, Genesis chapter 9. We'll get out of 6. Uh, chapter 9, verse uh, 15. Thank you, Lord. Genesis chapter 9, verse 15. And I will remember my covenant. How many know the ark went through <laughs> a flood, but then there was a covenant made by God. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow, the rainbow, shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Come on, somebody. And God said to Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Today, the rainbow, which was God's covenant during the time of Noah, the rainbow is now being perverted. And we're hearing in the past week or two, is being perverted even more so with all the violence that is going on. They're using the rainbow. We're living an hour of wickedness, people. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. It's time to wake up. Yeah, yeah. It's time to, it's, it, it's, it's past time. God made a covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. Go, go here to verse 18. And the sons of Noah that went forth in the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah or over, was populated. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine. How many know when he was drinking of that wine, it was during a feast? I mean, most of the feasts uh, had uh, a part of the feast was uh, having wine. And he drank of the wine and was drunk, and he was uncovered inside his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren outside. First of all, here we go again with a pig. Ham. Ham. <laughs> I really don't think God likes pigs at all. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and Ham, he saw, he, he, he not only saw the nakedness of, of his father, Noah, but he looked upon looked upon that when you when you see that it it there's a connotation there and if you go back to early uh, the Talmud and, and other writings Jewish writings you find out that he did more than just have a glance right, sure did. Right. there was something wicked about ham yeah. and about ham the son of uh, mm -hmm. uh, of Noah. <laughs> I don't recommend ham for Christmas anymore right now. <laughs> All right. Now, and, 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 and Ham, uh, it will, in verse 23, And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both of their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. 
And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. What he had done to him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. I want you to notice something here. Noah did not curse Ham. Noah did not curse Ham. He cursed the fourth son of Ham, whose name was Canaan. Which doesn't sound fair whatsoever. Canaan just happened to be the fourth son, not the first son. You know, firstborn son is special. Not the second son, not the third son. The fourth son of Ham, Noah curses him. I believe, without any shadow of a doubt, and I can prove it by genealogy, I believe that Canaan is a result of Ham and his wife. I believe Noah and all his generation was perfect, but Ham's wife had the gene. And you can prove that out, because the genealogy of Canaan comes the Canaanites and all the ites. So, when they looked, Noah looked upon Ham and all the filth that Ham had. And all the junk that he put up with, with his wife. He saw in Canaan something. Maybe he was tall. Maybe he had six fingers, because many of the giants had six fingers and six toes. You say, how do you know that? Well, Word of God says it. Come on. Uh, it, it says uh, in, uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 20, many of them had six fingers and six toes. I believe the offspring of Canaan and his wife, I mean Ham and his wife, produced Canaan, and there was something about Canaan that Noah had had, had it. When Canaan came about, there was something different about him. He may have been very tall, probably was. We know that Canaan went on, his descendants are what it would be Israel today. It was Canaan land. That's where Abraham went, to Canaan land. His descendants were up around Syria, the Phoenicians, Canaan land, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, and into parts of Egypt. Those are the areas of the Canaanites or those that came from Cain. Cain became the servant of Israel. Israel made slaves of the Canaanites, just like the curse said. How many know that people have tried to use this particular verse to say that's why black people have been slaves because they were of, of uh, Canaan? How many know they were not? <laughs> the black race came from Africa and all of the ones that, that came and, and were part of slavery literally were of the other brothers. They came from the other brothers the first three brothers, not the fourth. So the curse of Noah did not cause black slavery. Are you hearing me? Amen. But black slavery is now the pain that's causing Marxism to enter into our country. It has nothing to do with the black man. It has to do with an agenda of socialism that has that has been working for years. 
really came on the scene in a big way in, in, with the New Deal. But now we're living in a day and an hour where we're looking back. Now you got to understand something about uh, Canaan. <laughs> his, uh, what was his great grandson, was Nimrod. Nimrod. And Nimrod was a giant. And Nimrod was the father of all religions. How do you know there was all kinds of filth and junk and, and uh, what went on with Nimrod and, and, and the worship of Baal and all the stuff that went on was stuff that came from the seed of Ham and the seed of his wife. Yes, Noah and his family were perfect in their generations. They didn't have the Nephilim gene. But Ham's wife did, and that's how the giants somehow got through and were on the other side of the flood. They came through the descendants of Canaan. Are you hearing me? Even the evil and, and the filth and, and really the, uh, the, twist, the wickedness, the twistedness of Canaan, you can see that in Sodom and Gomorrah because Sodom and Gomorrah were the Canaanites. You think that spirit was on Ham when he saw his father? Come on, somebody. That spirit goes through the generations. Canaan's descendants were the giants. And uh, that's how it got through. It got through with Ham's wife. You know, when you think of David, and you think of the greatest story in the Bible of David going up against Goliath. And here he is, a young boy. He, he wasn't King David yet. He's, he was a shepherd boy. Spent most of his time out there under the stars getting filled up with the, with the power of God. He came up against that uncircumcised Philistine. He came up against him, Goliath of Gath. And he said, who are you? <laughs> You're nothing. And he, he swung that stone into the forehead of Goliath. And Goliath didn't die from that. He was stunned. He fell to the ground through it. But David came and grabbed that sword and cut the head off of Goliath. Picked up that, that skull. Picked up that head. And marched it all the way 20 miles to Jerusalem. And as the story goes, he, he dug a hole and he buried it in a hill. He buried it in a hill. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He couldn't keep it in his tent. It was unclean. He couldn't keep it anywhere. He had to bury it according to Levitical law. And the Jews record that he buried it in a hill in Jerusalem. There is a hill called the Hill of of the skull. Amen. The word Calvary means hill of the skull. That's right. It literally means skull. If you go to Calvary Church, you go to Skull Church. <laughs> Golgotha it's, it is used more. And Golgotha is literally skull. It's translated either they either have Calvary there in, in your Bible or Golgotha. But it is skull. Jesus was, when he was on that cross, the blood of Jesus poured forth and flowed down that cross, down upon that hill, down upon the giant. Come on, somebody. And the blood covered that, and from that point on, Every giant is bound. Every giant in your life is bound. Every situation you ever come up against, it is bound. Come on, somebody. As in the days of Noah, we are seeing the violence. We are seeing the hybrids. We are seeing the junk. We are seeing all types of things. I believe we are living in that day. Amen. Amen. And as the days of Noah, we better wake up and not just be eating and drinking and giving a marriage, but understand the day and the hour in which we live.
Amen. Say, I believe, I believe the, word of God. the Word of God. There is no weapon, is no weapon formed, against me formed against me that's going to prosper. Going to prosper. We, are the light. we are the light. We overcome darkness. We, overcome darkness. we, have, a we have a plan. We have a commission. Yeah, we have a commission. And we are going to go forth. And we're going to go forward. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen.